what can detect smoke, cancer and make elements. All these things work because of nuclear processes inside atoms and today we shall cover nuclear decay. Nuclear processes such as radioactivity, fusion and fission allow for transmutation of elements where an atom of one element changes into another. Unlike a chemical reaction where only the valence electrons rearrange, nuclear reactions involve changes in fundamental particles inside the atomic nucleus. Antoine Henri Becquerel was the original discoverer of radioactivity when he found that photographic plates got bright spots when exposed to uranium. Murray and Pierre Curie built up on his ideas. Nuclear decay stabilizes the nucleus of the atom in many different ways. When exposed to different magnetic fields, radiation was shown to be composed of the following types. Alpha particles form when the nucleus is too big. The strong nuclear force is what binds the nucleus together and prevents protons from repelling as it is 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force in an atom. The bigger the nucleus, the more the electromagnetic force until protons and neutrons fly out, that is. In alpha decay, two protons and two neutrons are removed, meaning that a helium nucleus is emitted. Before moving on to the examples, we need to revise nuclide symbols. The number on the bottom is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And the number on top, which is four, is the mass number which is basically the atomic number, number of protons, plus the number of neutrons in the atom. Alright, so here's an equation. Uranium-238 becomes thorium-234 plus helium, which is of course our alpha particle. Now, if you notice, thorium is two elements behind uranium because its atomic number is 92 minus 2. 2 is basically the atomic number of helium and that becomes the atomic number of thorium. Any element with 90 protons is thorium. Now, beta decay comes in a few types. In a nutshell, beta particles are emitted when the neutron to proton ratio is irregular in an atom with particle emission happening to regulate the ratio. Now, how can subatomic particles change into one another? Protons have an atomic number of one, and a mass of 1. Electrons have an atomic number of minus 1. We'll get to why in just a moment. And their mass is negligible. Now, the mass of a neutron, represented by n, is the same as a proton and its atomic number is 0. Because no matter how many neutrons you add to an atom, its atomic number is not going to change. A proton plus an electron can become a neutron because the mass numbers, they will add up. So one plus zero is one over here. And the atomic numbers will add up. So one plus minus one, that's just equal to one minus one is equal to zero. If the number of protons is too high as compared to neutrons, beta plus decay occurs. In beta plus, a proton spontaneously becomes a neutron and a positron, which is the antimatter equivalent of an electron with the same mass as one, but a positive charge. The resultant energy transforms into a small particle called a neutrino because of the equation E equals mc squared telling us that energy and mass can change into one another. Since the proton is gone, the ratio is regulated. In this equation, a proton is released. So the atomic number will become six minus one. Taking away a proton from carbon gives us boron with atomic number five. Since the mass numbers are the same, the elements are isobars of each other. There's another way to decrease the number of protons via electron capture. This is when the proton absorbs an electron and the mass numbers add up to one and the atomic number becomes zero, like I explained in my previous example. Traditionally, we see beta minus in textbooks. This is when the amount of neutrons present in the atom have exceeded the limit, causing it to be unstable. As a result, the neutron becomes a proton and electron, 
with the minimal excess energy released as an anti-neutrino, the antimatter equivalent of a neutrino. Here's a formula. So if you notice here, seven minus one, I'm looking at the atomic numbers over here, is equal to six. Seven is of course of nitrogen and the minus one comes from the beta particle, which in this case is an electron. Now, six is the atomic number of carbon. Alpha and beta decay releases a lot of energy, which is of a high frequency. The frequency corresponds to gamma rays and is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Gamma decay happens when the nucleus becomes excited. Excitement occurs when the atom is not in its ground state and a gamma ray is absorbed because of this energy. To lose this extra energy, the gamma ray is released as a photon, a particle of light. In addition, a photon is composed of a positron and an electron. Since there is no transmutation of elements which occurs in gamma radiation, an equation looks like this. So the asterisk represents the excited state of an atom and basically it just goes into the ground state and releases a photon. All right, this is the last type of emission, neutron emission. This is when excessive neutrons cause the atom to be unstable, resulting in a release of neutron from the atom. After this process, the atom will end up with one less mass number, becoming a different isotope of the same element. How to measure all of this? Activity is the overall rate of decay of isotopes measured in becquerels, of course. One becquerel is basically one decay per second. Halving this activity is called half-life. which Half-life is basically the time it takes for half of the element to transmute it. A Geiger counter records all of this decay and hence is used to measure stuff like this. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about radiation. If this video provided value to you, I recommend that you check out this channel and give it a subscribe so that we can continue making content like this. Stay scientific.